Okay, this video is about mixtures. So the question here is, what are mixtures? And again, by Mr. Thiel. So we'll look at a definition for mixtures. So mixtures, what a mixture is, is it is a combination of substances, a combination specifically of two or more pure substances. And those pure substances, while they are combined together, they do not actually combine chemically. So they're not chemically combined, they are just simply mixed together. So it's a combination of two or more pure substances that are not chemically combined. Now when we say that they are not chemically combined, that gives us uh, some information about mixtures, and that is that substances and mixtures keep all of their physical and chemical properties. Therefore, what that means, when they're not chemically combined, what we could also say is they keep their identity. So substances that are in mixtures, while they are combined together physically, they do not actually combine together chemically, so their identity does not change, and they keep all of their physical and chemical properties while in that mixture. Their identity does not change. So what we'll do first here is we will review some other substances that I talked about in the previous video. So we've got gold, the element gold, and the element carbon. So we have two elements here. And we also talked about a couple of compounds. There's water. It's made up of water molecules. And we have sodium chloride or salt, table salt. Now when we look at these different substances here, we can, if we could see the particles that make up these substances, we can see something that makes them pure substances but not mixtures. If we look at gold, as I've drawn the box here, if we were able to see the particles of gold, we would see that gold is simply made up, the element gold is simply made up of gold atoms and nothing else. So just one type of atom. Likewise, when we look at the element carbon, we see that the element carbon is made up exclusively of carbon atoms and nothing else. So just one type of atom there. When we look at water molecules, or water, we look at what water makes up pure water, and those are water molecules. Again, we just have one type of particle that makes up the pure substance water. And lastly, we'll look at sodium chloride. If we could see the particles that make up sodium chloride, we would see, uh, or table salt, we'd see the sodium chloride salt particle, and that's it. So because each of these substances here, the element gold, elements gold and carbon and the compounds, water and sodium chloride, they're each only made up of just one type of particle, whether it be one type of atom, as in the case of gold and carbon, or one type of particle, as, in the case, as is the case with water and salt. Well, what that tells us is that these are not mixtures. Because by definition, a mixture is made up of two or more different types of particles. And these are only made up, each of these substances is only made up of just one type of particle. Okay, so now we'll look at, start looking at mixtures. So, oops, so if we were to take one of these pure substances we just looked at, which is water, and if we were to take that water and combine it, with another pure substance from that previous slide, sodium chloride or table salt. We, uh, it's well known that salt will dissolve in water. We mix these two things together, we get something new. What we get is, of course, salt water. Well, if we were able to look at the particles that make up salt water, we would see something different than what we've seen with these other substances I just mentioned. If we were to look at these particles, what we would see is a combination of different particles that make up the substance here. Now, salt water, the way that um, salt dissolves in water uh, is a little bit more complex than a, a really simple mixture, but it's still considered to be a mixture. Now, what we see when um, we see salt water, the particles of salt water, we see two different types of particle. The first one that we see is the water molecule, and the next one that we see are the salt, par salt particles. Now, what's a little complicated about salt is the, the particles, the sodium and the chlor uh, chlorine, 
atoms, or they're really ions technically, uh, will separate from each other when they are dissolved in, in water. But they still maintain the same properties, and if the water is removed, they go right back to uh, being combined or in close association with each other to form uh, sodium chloride or salt. So what this shows us here, though, is that uh, we, have a, we have a substance here that is made up of a combination of more than one substance. And what that means is that salt water is, in fact, a mixture. We have more than one type of substance mixed together or combined together. We have water molecules and salt particles combined together, and that gives us a mixture. Okay, now we'll look at another mixture that uh, showed up in a previous video. Uh, this mixture is muddy water. So muddy water is... Um, something we're familiar with. You see it in ponds or lakes or rivers all the time, hopefully not coming out of your sink. But uh, muddy water is a mixture. If we could see the particles of muddy water, what we would see is we'd see uh, two different types of particles. So there, there are two different types of particles. Uh, the first one is the water molecule, just like we saw with the salt water. And I, in fact, you'll, you'll recognize a theme here when we're looking at liquids. Uh, one of the liquids, uh, when we have a mixture, if, we, if it's in a liquid form, we almost always have water involved with that, with that mixture. So there's a water molecule present here, and we also have, as I showed in the previous video about pure substances, we have our mud particle, this generic mud particle. Now, it's not, it's not just a simple single mud particle, but for uh, the sake of simplicity, that's what we'll call it. So again, what we have here is we have uh, two different substances combined together, not chemically combined, so their identity doesn't change, but they are nonetheless mixed together, or combined together, and that gives us another mixture. Mud water, muddy water. Okay, so now we'll look at some other types of mixtures, and one thing that it's important to understand is that mixtures come in many different forms. Uh, they're not just this, these solid and liquid forms, which I, which I just showed to you uh, in the previous two examples, the muddy water example and the salt water example. Mixtures can be solids, they can be liquids, they can be gases, or they can be some combination of, of these, solids, liquids, or gases. So uh, I'll give you some examples. So I'll give uh, of each of these different types of mixtures. So we have an example here of a gas mixed in with another gas. So Air is our example, the air that is all around us right now that we, that we breathe. So when we look at air, uh, we see that it is made up of several components. We have nitrogen, is the vast majority of the gases that are in our air are, is nitrogen. And we also have oxygen, of course, for us to breathe. And then we have a whole bunch of other gases in very small concentrations. We have argon, carbon dioxide, and then there are uh, a plethora of other gases that are in very, very small, uh, that occur in very, very small concentrations that I'm not, I won't get into for simplicity's sake again. So uh, uh, we'll just look here. Uh, I'll draw this person with this freakishly round head. Uh, but real, what I'm really emphasizing here is the air that's around this person. So if we were able to see the air around this person and see the particles that could make up the air that make up the air what we would see is that it's made up of a mixture of different substances uh, in fact there's four but there, there's actually many more in my drawing there's four again for simplicity's sake so we see nitrogen which is the primary gas about around 80 percent of our the, of our air is nitrogen gas around 20 percent is oxygen uh, and that's represented there with the box around it. And then I've drawn uh, a single argon atom. Argon's an element, occurs uh, as atoms floating around. And carbon dioxide uh, are both in this picture as well as four of the most common gases in the mixture of air. Sorry about that. Let's see. So we'll look at our next substance here. Again, I'm going to repeat the same statement here a couple of times. Mixtures can be solids, liquids, gases, or some combination of these. So the next combination that we'll look at is a gas and a liquid. And so the example that we'll look at here is soda, a common, common substance that we encounter maybe daily. Um, and if we look at soda, the components of soda, we're, we're going to simplify this quite a bit, but we have carbon dioxide is the gas here. 
and the liquid will be the soda. Now, the liquid that is soda is mostly water. There's other stuff that's mixed in there as well, but again, for simplicity's sake, we're looking at carbon dioxide and the liquid soda. So, if we have a little soda here. Got a soda can. And just to make sure, I'll make sure that you know it's soda. And again, if we could see the particles that make up the soda, what we would see is this combination of more than one substance. So we see soda and carbon dioxide mixed into the soda. So we've got our uh, carbon dioxide molecules, and they are dissolved in the soda, the liquid soda. And so again, we have a substance here that is made up of uh, at least two, two or more uh, pure substances mixed together, and that's, uh, in this case, the gas carbon dioxide is dissolved in the liquid soda. So that is another mixture. Okay, next. Next, we will look at... Again, we'll repeat the same statement. Mixtures can be solids, liquids, gases, or some combination of these. And now we'll look at another example. We'll look at liquids in air. Liquids dissolved in air. And the example that we'll look at are water droplets. And we have a, a more well-known word to describe this in air. Uh, but again, we're looking at liquid water that is mixed with our air, which is, a, a, as we've already shown previously, a mixture of many different gases, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, argon, being four of the ones that I showed you in the previous, in the previous example, uh, and many others. So, but what we recognize as liquid in, the, in air, we call clouds. So we've got this cloud here. If we were able to see the particles that make up this cloud, Again, what we would see is we'd see water molecules, and then we see air molecules. Now, I've drawn these two blue spheres that represent the nitrogen, nitrogen gas uh, model, and I haven't drawn any other gases that are uh, part of the air. That's Nitrogen is the most common one, so that's sufficient for this example. But again, what you see is you see liquid water, and it is mixed together with uh, air, and that is, will give us a cloud or fog. Uh, in, in our air, or just uh, basic humidity. Okay. Again, mixtures can be solids, liquids, gases, or some combination of these. And now we'll look at liquids mixed in liquids. And our example here will be vinegar. So vinegar is a mixture of a substance called acetic acid, which is a liquid, and water. So this is vinegar that you can find in your kitchen. So, we look at a bottle of vinegar here, and again, if we're able to see the molecules that make up the substance vinegar, what we would see is we'd see a mixture of the acetic acid, which I've drawn, uh, drawn here in this space filling model, along with water molecules mixed together. So we've got our acetic acid molecule right there with the box around it and it's mixed to get mixed into these uh, this liquid water. So we have these two liquids mixed together to make vinegar. It's a mixture again because you have two different substances mixed together and combined together but they maintain their identity. They're not chemically combining. Alright, next Again, same statement. Mixtures can be solids, liquids, gases, or some combination of these. Our next example will be a solid dissolved in a liquid. And these are, this is a pretty common uh, type of mixture that we encounter. Uh, Kool-Aid is an example of this. Any kind of drink mix uh, could be a, an example of this. So when we look at Kool-Aid, we see that we have uh, the Kool-Aid drinks mix that is mixed together with water. So if we look at a pitcher with some Kool-Aid in it. And if we were to look at the molecules that make up the Kool-Aid, uh, what we would see actually is we would see a solid, so there's our Kool-Aid, I guess grape or something. Uh, if we were to, to see the molecules that make up this Kool-Aid though, we'd see the Kool-Aid mi drink mix, a solid, and we would see it mixed together with water. That's what's shown here. So you see all the, the familiar, hopefully familiar at this point, water molecules, little Mickey Mouse, mouse looking molecules. Um, 
and the Kool-Aid. So there's our, our generic little Kool-Aid molecule and our water molecule. Again, we have two different substances mixed together. Uh, in this case, a solid and a liquid. Uh, in, the, in the case of Kool-Aid. So that's just another mixture. And finally, uh, mixtures again can be solids, liquids, gases, or some combination of these. And now we'll look at a solid and a solid. And we don't often think of, of solids as mixtures, but there are all sorts of solids that we encounter that are mixtures. And one example is brass. Um, when you have metals that are mixed together, or um, you can have metals that are mixed with non-metals, uh, these are called alloys. And brass is an alloy. It is an alloy that contains zinc, the element zinc, and the element copper. Two different metals mixed together. So if we uh, were to look at a trumpet, so we've got a trumpet here, or any other kind of brass instrument, a saxophone, a tuba, uh, French horn. Uh, the brass instruments, or any, any other substance made of brass, we could see the particles. We would see that we have a mixture of zinc and copper atoms. Now, zinc itself is an element, and copper is an element, so what we see here are just individual atoms. We don't see molecules like we've seen in some of the previous examples, but we have two different metals mixed together here, the element zinc and the, the element copper. So there's our zinc right there, and there is our copper. So that is a, just one more example of a mixture. And again, what defines mixtures is the fact that they are substances that are made of they're, that are made of two or more pure substances that are mixed together, but they're, they're not chemically combined, so they maintain their physical and chemical properties. Their identities do not change within the mixture.